This video is on heart disease. Coronary heart disease, for me, strikes a personal chord as I have lived with and lost my closest family members to heart problems. Coronary heart disease greatly affects the circulatory system and one of our most fundamental organs, the heart. Coronary heart disease is caused by one main condition that affects the arteries of the cardiac muscle. Occurring over several years, lipids and plaques steadily form within the blood vessels that deliver blood to the heart organ. Over time, the accumulation of lipids will clog the arteries and impair blood flow. Developing plaques decrease the capability of adequate circulation of oxygen and nutrients reaching the deep tissues of the arteries. Muscle cells begin to perish and elastic fibres become defective, causing scar tissue. Artery walls are ultimately damaged, putting the victim at a higher risk of heart attack as cholesterol and fats begin to gather at the site of the damaged endothelium. One of the most serious and life-threatening results of coronary heart disease is heart attack. The sudden occurrence of a total block in a coronary artery diminishes blood supply to the heart and consequently the cardiac muscle begins to die. Heart attack is a likely trigger of heart failure as it is essentially means that the cardiac muscle has weakened and is less sufficient at pumping blood through the circulatory system. The cardiac muscle is unable to heal. Angina is one of the most common symptoms of coronary heart disease. Due to the inadequate amount of blood reaching the cardiac muscle, chest pain and irritation occur. Symptoms of angina can be mistaken for indigestion due to the burning or tightness sensation in the chest. Heart palpitations may be caused by a breakdown or a glitch within the cardiac muscle electrical system and can be symptomatic of coronary heart disease. The sensation of heart palpitations include fast, fluttering or skipping beats. Hypertension is elevated blood pressure. Blood pressure is defined by the amount of pressure that the heart pumps through the arteries with each beat. A healthy rate is between 110 to 140 mmHg systolic and 70 to 80 mmHg diastolic. A buildup of too much cholesterol in the blood will cause the accumulation of fat lipids within the coronary arteries. Cholesterol, along with blood pressure, should be checked regularly by your doctor as they inhibit no obvious signs or symptoms on their own. The heart is, in simplest terms, a highly active and persevering pump. The primary function of the cardiovascular system as a whole is to carry oxygen, nutrients, hormones and other materials via the blood from the heart to the cells and back again. Nestled within the thorax, with each lung beside it, the fist-sized cardiac organ has four chambers. The atria are the two chambers at the top and the ventricles are the two lower chambers. Separating each of these chambers is the septum, essentially walls of tissue. Heart valves assist the movement of blood through the chambers of the heart in a one-way action. After being circulated through the body, the oxygen poor blood returns to the heart through the superior and inferior vena cava into the right atrium. Blood then flows into the right ventricle via the tricuspid valve. The blood then goes through the pulmonary valve into and through the pulmonary artery to the lungs. Oxygen rich blood returns from the lungs from the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. The fresh blood then flows into the left ventricle via the mitral valve and from here goes into the aortic valve and exits through the heart 
through the aorta to supply blood black back into the circulatory system. In order for blood to be transported through the body, the heart is equipped with an electrical system. Electrical impulses provoke the chambers of the heart to contract and then relax. There are signs and symptoms we can look out for in relation to an impending heart attack. It is important to remember, however, that each individual's experience may differ to another. Perhaps the most widely known symptom is chest pain, tightness, fullness or squeezing. Other signs of heart attack that accompany and radiate from the chest include pain in the lower jaw, pain or strangling and burning sensation in the neck, pain or a dull acheness in the shoulders and back, pain or a numbing or tingling sensation in the arms. Other symptoms may include a general feeling of being unwell, feeling faint or dizzy, feeling nervous or having cold sweats, and difficulty breathing. If you are taken to hospital with a possible heart attack, a number of tests will be carried out to confirm and decide on further treatment. These may include electrocardiogram, a stress test, a chest x-ray and blood tests. Symptoms of angina are quite similar to those of a heart attack. However, those who experience angina commonly say that the chest discomfort feels like indigestion. Persons that live with heart failure often feel exhausted as the cardiac muscle has become weak. <coughs> a condition may also arise in heart failure whereby blood can pull at the back of the heart and cause fluid retention in the lungs and other parts of the body. Palpitations can feel like the heart is fluttering or skipping beats, most notably during over overexertion, stressful situations or excess nicotine and caffeine consumption. There are no obvious signs or symptoms for having high cholesterol or high blood pressure, which is why you should have them checked regularly by your GP. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, last recorded in 2011 and 2012, more than 1.1 million people suffered from heart disease in Australia. That is approximately 5% of the population of more than 22 million. 29.2% of Australians diagnosed with the condition were aged 75 years of age and older. Somebody dies from coronary heart disease every 24 minutes, making it the biggest cause of mortality in the Australian population. In 2011 alone, 21,500 people were killed by the heart disease, with 55,000 of those due to heart attack. The Government of Australia has a number of national programs that encourage preventative awareness and invaluable information on managing coronary heart disease. For more information and online links to initiatives, initiatives and campaigns, please visit the Australian Government Department of Health webpage. The Shape Up Australia campaign targets the country's expanding midsection, focusing on obesity and weight gain and how it can contribute to heart disease, among other health issues. The Shape Up Australia initiative includes information on downsizing our waistlines and maintaining a healthy diet and lifestyle. There are also numerous charitable and non-government organisations involved in the awareness of coronary heart disease, with the majority offering news, facts and other material on the conditions associated with coronary heart disease. Some of these organisations include the National Heart Foundation of Australia, which is the most widely recognised organisation. Heart Kids Australia, which provides assistance for children with heart disease 
and offering assistance to the affected families, as well as research and spreading awareness. Heart Research Institute, Inc., which, is, which researches into all facets of heart disease, working on lowering the amount of cases of deaths. And Hearts for Hearts, support for sufferers, promoting healthier lifestyles and spreading awareness to the community. Coronary heart disease can be managed with a number of approaches. Changes to your lifestyle, including eating a healthier diet and regular exercise, can contribute. When signs of coronary heart disease are very serious, however, medical intervention and surgery is often needed. When initially diagnosed and before the condition becomes life-threatening, medication can be prescribed to lessen symptoms and delay the disease from developing faster. Medications for coronary heart disease consist of aspirin, calcium channel blockers, nitrates and medicine that is used to lower cholesterol. There is also a medication known as beta blockers, sold under some brand names such as Sectral, Zabeta and Corgard. Essentially, beta blockers impact on the sympathetic nervous system by blocking norepinephrine and epinephrine from connecting with the beta receptors, which can be observed on the nerves of the heart and arteries, among others. Effectively, the drug brings blood pressure levels down and slows a fastened heart rate as it opens up the arteries. Apart from taking prescribed medications to manage your heart disease, you may also benefit from using vitamins and supplements. One in particular is fish oil, or omega-3. Fish oil has been known to help with many conditions, from skin conditions to arthritis, but it is often taken by coronary heart disease sufferers for its blood clotting prevention, to widen blood vessels, lower blood pressure, and lower triglycerides. Massage therapy in coronary heart disease. Depending on how severe or how far advanced the client's coronary heart disease is, it will, it will <laughs> impact treatment in one way or another as it is contraindicated to massage. For the safety of the client, it is imperative the therapist is trained in first aid. If first aid skills are current and up to date, it will ensure the therapist will know what to do if an emergency arises. If you do suffer with coronary heart disease, for your own peace of mind, the massage therapist will ask that you have a written medical clearance from your general practitioner stating whether or not it is safe to proceed with treatment. It is also important to be honest with your massage therapist and let them know what medications you are taking and how your coronary heart disease is being managed, as some medications are further contraindicated. Massage can assist with boosting circulation in clients with coronary heart disease and aid in relaxation due to potential anxieties and tension arising from the condition. Massage treatment duration time and techniques will, however, need to be adapted so that no unnecessary burden is placed on the heart. Thank you for your time.